Welcome, uh, welcome back, everyone. Week seven of Rowdy's Reviews, recapping the Bristol Spring Race with a twist. We were on dirt, first dirt race in over 50 years. A lot of hype around it, a lot of anticipation. Mud washed everything off the track. You, you don't want to see rain at the racetrack, especially when it's covered in dirt. So track was in a monsoon yesterday, postponed it to today, and... Wasn't short of action, but everyone has their own opinion on what kind of action that was, whether it was enjoyable, whether it was for entertainment in the sense that they tried too much. And what's your take on the whole dirt situation? Um, me personally, I think it was, it was cool to just for the fact that, you know, like you said, it's been, 50 over 50 years since nascar has ever seen a dirt race but um i um personally uh i just wasn't really a uh fan of uh a fan of it you know just because of um i don't really think the cup cars are made for dirt racing um i've kind of I've kind of said that since, uh, you know, since the start, um, you know, the trucks have raced at, at, uh, Eldora the past several years and they, they always put on a hell of a show. So I already knew the truck race was going to be good there. Um, but I think it's cool that they gave NASCAR a shot to be able to come do this, to be on dirt. And all that, but let's just face it, it was a disaster. Nothing went right. Uh, I guarantee you, every driver in the field today complained about something. Um, whether it wasn't being able to see anything or that there's a few drivers at the start that had overheating issues that we'll dive into in a minute. Um, so it just, it was a twist for sure. Um, I just don't think that um, I don't think it was exciting enough for whoever it was to decide to do this again next year, but we're doing it again next year. So I know what it's going to be like. Uh, it's not going to be very fun, but um, it is what it is. I mean, we'll go to a real racetrack next. That Kyle's good at, and depending um, on what kind of car they give him, yeah. Um, Hopefully, he doesn't go a lap down before the comp again. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah, was, I didn't even think of the fact that <laughs> we're not practicing or qualifying there. But it was it was cool to see practice back for um for once. Um, I know qualifying got rained out. But it was cool to just be able to see the cars on track to get some laps um, before that mess because it would have – think about how big of a mess it would have been if we would have just raced that. Uh, it would have been not not very cool. So that's really my take on it. I wasn't really a big fan of it. The, the truck race was awesome. Um, but I already knew the trucks. If you're going to put – if you're going to decide to – have a NASCAR race on the dirt. I think it would just just stick to trucks because trucks obviously put on a good show on the dirt tracks. So, but in my opinion, I I'd personally dislike to quit. I I wouldn't. I don't want to see another dirt race for the Cup cars because it just it didn't really work out. So that's that's my take on it. Um, I'm gonna let Nick talk some. Yeah, so it was cool to see them on dirt for a little bit, you know, throwing it back to when NASCAR began. Um, there was times, it, it's, it's all situational. Like, I enjoyed some of the aspects of dirt racing, but it's not it's nothing like a sprint car or modified where you can get big runs, where you can throw the car around wherever you want. These are heavy stock cars. And in, in like modified, you see the, the top side, they get a huge run off the top and then slide them into the next corner. They, these cars so heavy. And another thing, Bristol um, just didn't really lay itself to that 
to let that action that we wanted, you know, like Hamlin tried to gain on Logano using the top and nothing was make he wasn't making any progress. And that's the cool thing. Like it was single file on the bottom for a lot of the race, which is like old style Bristol, but um, that's not what you really want to ex expect with dirt racing. You don't expect like follow the leader. You expect multiple lanes, go wherever you need to and make up time. And you didn't really get that today. It was just the top, the, the bottom running. Like, I think it has to do with them choosing Bristol as a dirt track. Um, in my opinion, they got to choose a track that's made, made for dirt, not just throw dirt on any, any type of track. Like Eldora puts on a hell of a show. They got, they were in dirt races all year. They know how to, they, they know how to take care of the track during the races, like water it down, how to, make itself to good racing but with the cup cars they didn't know what to do they're too heavy and we just like the when somebody spun out there was no brakes at all and people were complaining because car guys were getting involved in a crash that happened 10 seconds before but there's literally no way to stop and with the poorly take poorly track and poor track conditions after lap 150, I think it was, either they didn't water down the, I don't know what they did wrong, but dust was all over the place, all in the air. The spotters couldn't even see, and the car, the drivers can't even see where they're going. So I don't know what kind of entertainment that is, where take away the driver's visions, the spotter's vision. I guess there's some NASCAR fans who just like watching Rex all day and seeing people pile in, but... I think if they're going to keep dirt, I, I don't, I wasn't happy to hear that's coming back next year, but if they were to keep dirt, make it a exhibition race, like a non points race and make it a dirt a track specified for dirt. Like there, like some of the tracks that Arca races at like Ducoin or uh, yeah, Ducoin. And remember there's another dirt track in the K and N series that Deegan won at. I don't know how cost cost expensive expenses this would be, but ARCA, they race like the Gen 6 bodies, but then when they go to the dirt races, some of them race the Gen 4, and those cars aren't as heavy, and they're, they, they're more mo mobile on the dirt track. So it was a trial. I don't think it succeeded. A lot of people think it does, but in my opinion, after watching NASCAR pavement for my whole life, I just didn't like the dirt aspect. If I wanted to watch dirt, I'd watch Supercross. So, yeah. Yeah, and I was uh, on that last restart, I was awfully shocked to see Hamlin do what he did because I'm like, that's the first thing I expected, you know, is, you know, uh, you know, as soon as they threw that yellow, I'm like, oh, this is going to get wild. You know, we're going to this is where I'm like, okay, we're probably going to see a fight at the end of this thing because I mean, somebody was either going to send it in to try to win the race or do whatever. And the first thing I thought of is, you know, I mean, you know how Hamlin and Logano have always raced each other, especially over the past couple of years. Um, first thing I thought of was just Danny just dive bombing the corner and taking Logano out or trying to go for it. But no, he went up high and it just, uh, I think that was the same restart where Truex blew that tire. Yeah. And went third or fourth to like 17 but yeah i was i was awfully shocked to see hamlin just go up high knowing that there i mean all race everybody i mean there was like a good three or four or five cars that tried going up high and it's epic and just obviously failed because there was uh no grip so the reason all of that was like just crashes i think that's where most of the crashes really happened today was people trying to run the middle or the top because there's really I mean, it was a one-lane race. It was a one-lane racetrack, and everybody was stuck on the bottom because you couldn't go anywhere else. And if you did, it was disaster. So, um, and you know, I got kind of excited. You know, at the start, I'm like, "Ooh, look!" I mean, we started fourth, um, led the first lap. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this car is going to be, I mean, fast." You know, just you know, have a great day. And ten laps later, I hear the radio saying about to blow up and coming to you i'm like great 
I knew that was going to be like an automatic lap down too because it's Bristol. And then he came back out on the track and was complaining about he couldn't see anything and he's going to have to come back demanding the team to tear off and all that. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a great race for, for him. And you get mired back and all that, um, all that BS, you know, mid pack and we're like, great. You know, this is, we're going to get caught up in somebody else's mess. And sure enough, we were, uh, but it is what it is really. It happened. Can't, can't look back on it. We can only look forward. Um, Martinsville is one of my favorite racetracks. So hopefully we can do something good there in two weeks. Yeah, hopefully Ben's got a notebook that has, it won't correlate at all, but he led Burton to the Xfinity win last year. So hopefully he can bring something special for KB. The, the first race in June, Martinsville last year, went a lap down before the lap 50 competition caution, which was pretty pathetic. And I don't, I don't know if he ever got his lap back at all, over 500 laps, but I know if he did, it took him at least 400 of them to get it back because of LaJoy playing games and staying out, not letting anyone get a wave around. And then the fall race, I don't know. He was like back, back at the top 10. And I don't know. I think he finished like 11th when Harvick tried to spin him, but yeah. That one race, um, the spring race last year, he actually finished a lap down because he ended up going like, they're like 150 to 200 laps in. He lost like three laps total because the brake package was off big time. And yeah. it's just, uh, I mean, and these are tracks you just need practice and qualifying at to get. I mean, there, there's just some tracks with the exception of, um, there are some tracks you can go to that you don't really need, need to spend a whole lot of time getting your car set up or, and all that, but these short tracks, you, you're, you kind of gonna want practice because that's just um, short tracks are short tracks. So, um, yeah. Um, Look, looking forward to that. At least it's not as unpredictable as, I mean, it's unpredictable, but not as much as this. But uh, yeah. So the general recap of the race was: race got underway. KB started fourth Larson had to drop to the rear so it's like a net third and then shot out on the top on the re on the initial start past Hamlin and then out of the 40 cars in the race somehow in the lead he gets a bunch of mud on his grill explain that to me when everyone else is in traffic and don't get mud but the leader does um had to pit temperature temps were rising too high lucky lucky enough to only lose a lap um, those five laps and the first five laps were probably the only time I was happy today. And, um, yeah, got his lap back after a bunch of dirt crashes and ARCA breaks. And then he got his way up to 14th by like lap 150. And I thought like, good, here's a restart to bunch him up. He'll gain some more spots. And then he kind of played that, uh, that fit, that run couldn't really make up any ground he was just staying behind him and then he burned his tires off and then another restart Blaney just lost it and of course KB was directly behind him not to mention the dirt that was all in the air literally the onboard you can't see anything so I don't know how that's entertaining and how people like that but fought saw, sawed some sawed some uh panels off and capitalize on some other people's wrecks and finish 17th. Um, not terrible, not great. I wanted to top 10 out of the day, but didn't happen. I guess seeing that run where he was in like 14th, 15th, the whole, the whole run, and then finishing 17th, it's not the worst thing, but it would have been a lot better if this was pavement, and I would have he would have been top three, I bet, unless having an issue, but... Like he said, uh, lap two hundred after the stage. How many? How many more laps in this clown show? What's that? After lap two hundred, 
he he asked how many how many laps to go in this clown show. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was funny on the radio. He they had like that stage break where they're under a red flag, just pitting, and Bayshore goes, "Yeah, the right front shock's broken." And Kyle just pauses and he goes, "Cool." Like he doesn't even care anymore. Like you know, and to top it all off, Logano won. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, sucks they had to ruin one of my favorite tracks. Like. 30 there's like 26 ish tracks a year and my favorite tracks probably bristol and they had to get rid of one of them so that's great and turn it into this carnival but i don't know richmond's one of his good tracks so they're probably going to change one of those races too in the future yeah all i can hope is that those cars drive better on dirt next year in the, in the next gen car but i doubt it you know they're they're all made for road courses to to benefit the golden boy and they don't really care about mile and the halves. So they'll do what they need for entertainment and the ratings, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um Yeah, either way, those cars aren't going to be made for dirt. They're just too heavy. They're going to be too heavy either way. Um, even if it does look more sporty or whatever, it's just not. Um, I mean, the, the late models and modifieds are quite a bit lighter than the cup cars are. That's why you see them get around there the way they do. That's why they're built for dirt tracks. Um, and I don't even think – I mean, the car we're driving now, I don't even think is – built for road courses but they're like you said they're they're making it more of a road coursey car so uh yeah um so we'll just have to see what happens next yeah and going, going back to that final restart look at our hamlin got he got the jump, the jump was right even with Lebano, and I thought he was going to bump him out of the way, try to pull away like Kyle did to Larson in 18. But he chose the top, and I think the whole stadium wanted him to bump Lebano out of the way, and it didn't happen. Kind of reminds me of Ken Roxon in Supercross, my favorite Supercross rider. He's like uh, the dude in the second, the dude leading the championship was right behind him, and they were side by side. and the announcer, the fans, they were all the announcers like Kenny should have put him in the tough blocks and everyone wanted him to show his assertiveness and put 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 the rival to the ground and didn't and just kind of shows you always want to race with respect, but some of the guys out there don't really deserve it all the time. So when a win's on the line, you gotta do what you gotta do. You sh I mean, hell Hamlin does it to his teammates. So you got to like, show aggressiveness and got to do what's best for your team. Not just the team, but your team. It's like, kind of reminds me too of uh, Truex and Logano at Homestead in 18, you know, three weeks, three weeks after the Martinsville incident. Uh, after that, I feel like that's where, I mean, Logano has done a lot of stupid stuff, but I feel like that's, that's where a lot of the people, like a lot more people started to hate Logano after the, the Martinsville deal. Just because of how clean Truex raced him and worked him, worked him hard all those laps. And then Logano just wants to race like that because Logano knew he didn't have the car to just pass clean anyway. But either way, if he did have a, have a better car than Truex, so he, he still would have chose to race that way because that's just how he drives. Um, but I mean, after that, I mean, you heard Truex's interview where he said he's going to make sure he doesn't win the championship. I'm going to win it, and yada, yada. And then, boom, here we are, 20 laps to go in the 40 Go Beast 400. They're side by side. And I knew they viewed, like, there was, like, a good shot of the, of the people sitting in the stands. Like, they were just, like, raising hell, wanting Truex to just dump his ass. And didn't didn't have I think just Truex Truex is just too good of a guy if you ask me I mean yeah true I've seen Truex retaliate I've seen Truex mad too but Truex 
isn't the type of driver to just like to do something like that. Yeah. I mean, that that would have been a Kyle Busch 2011 moment right there if he really would have dumped him. Uh, like that would have been a that would have re- reminded me of a Ron Hornaday deal where he just didn't care. But I'm just sitting here like, man, I would have been so happy. Like, imagine all those people there. And it's like, man, like, what if what if Logano really would have gotten dumped on the back stretch when they were side by side? That would have been incredible. He wouldn't have he wouldn't have a championship. And the crowd rolling at Martinsville. What year was that? 2015 when Matt dumped when Matt yep. got him back. I've never ever seen a crowd reaction in sports like that i mean i i wished i lived in virginia at the time and was at martinsville for that because i would have been dude i would have never left the racetrack i would have been so, i would have been so happy yeah that was better back when chad canell said wow matt got more fans there than he has in his whole life yeah yeah and i love how matt just said oh i must have blew a tire there yeah. then then he jumps out of his car puts his shades on and walks to the the medical car without the ambulance that was fantastic but uh yeah tr- the, the most tricks is retaliated was when he spun jimmy after the race at the roval when it didn't matter but tricks complains when people are in his way but he he's clean and you know these cars just arrow block everywhere else except for I mean, even Joey blocked today, and somehow it fucking worked. Like, my 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 all-time low of this package was Kansas last year when Harvick was miles faster than him, and he couldn't get past him because of the package. I was at that race, actually. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Kansas? Uh, 2018 Roval. Oh, yeah. I sat. I literally sat right there because I – I called it when I got our tickets. I said, I want us to sit right here because this is exactly where the last lap wreck's going to be. And sure enough. That was um, painful. I wanted Jimmy to win that. Oh, I did too. I, uh, why, well, you know, you know that, I mean, you know, you know me, you know, I'm a diehard Kyle fan. I don't really root for anybody else, even the teammates. I really don't. There's some, I mean, there's some people out there that are just, this like the whole team i mean don't get me wrong i i like i like all the joe gibbs drivers but i don't i don't root for it. like you you're not going to see me walking around with the true x shirt or a, yeah i'm not like that much of a fan of the other drivers i'm a diehard kyle fan i only i only have kyle stuff yeah uh, so you know i'm a diehard kyle fan i've never once in my life stood on my feet and cheered so hard for another driver than i did jimmy that day yeah, my, my cousin my cousin's been a, a lifelong Jimmy fan, and it was painful to see him go so long without winning. Like, I like I complained last year about Kyle not winning until Texas. Every week I'd complain, but my cousin had to go three plus years to the end of Jimmy's career without a win. I feel bad for him. Like, the, arguably the best ever, and just to have that slump after that Pocono crash. Um, I was rooting for Jimmy. I have drivers I like. Like, I won't wear anything other than Kyle stuff, but like, I like Bell. I like Bubba Wallace. Um, I I mean, I I don't dislike Chase. I like Chase, but his fans kind of ruin it for me. Like, I wouldn't mind if Chase won a race or two. Like, when he whenever he wins, I'm not upset. But now let me just rewind a couple seconds. So. I've got Bell. I've got a few Bell shirts, but they're Xfinity shirts. And yeah. I've got a few KBM truck shirts because I do like uh, when I when, whenever I find out the lineup each year because really the only – I mean, I know Cup this year, between this year and last year, I feel like this is the most, the most changes we've had like with somebody or a few drivers actually moving up into the Cup series. And you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Just, um, we've had a lot of people come from Xfinity to Cup over the last two years, and um, but I usually like to wait. I mean, when silly season's going on, I usually wait for the lineup and then I pick a driver. You know, I'm hurt. Like, I mean, I I go for John Hunter this year in trucks. Um, 
Hemrick and Xfinity, and obviously, you know, my cup, my cup yeah. guy's never going to change until he retires. But um, so yeah, I actually do support the lower rankings. Um, but when Kyle's in the race, I'm not yeah. wearing the other guys' t-shirts. So yeah, and then you you know how it always works is your favorite and Xfinity. I mean, John Hunter's already won, but favorite in Xfinity and truck never win all year. And then when Kyle's in the race, they're second to him. And you're like, fuck, why does Kyle have to be in this race? Or they just beat Kyle like John yeah. Hunter did. But John Hunter wouldn't have won that race. If Kyle wouldn't have had the tire problem. No. Um, I know. It was like Chastain. He, he's average, av- like aver- top five. It's like where he, fifth was like where he'd be all year. And then when Kyle's in the race, he's in second. It's like, fuck. Same thing with Eckes at Texas. Eckes had the winning truck, but Kyle was in the race. So yeah. it's just how life goes, and it's really annoying. But I don't know. It's I'm, – I'm going to be bitter about Homestead, that Homestead Xfinity race, until if he, unless he wins a race again this year. That really pissed me off. Yeah, it really pissed you off, and it really made me happy. No, I'm I know. I'm not rubbing it in your face. But I, I was on a break at work, and I saw because I saw there was ten to go, and he was leading. And then that happened. I was pissed the rest of my shift. Yeah, I would have been too if it was my driver. Like, like Hemrick coming. I, I'm just tired of seeing Hemrick finish in second or third. Yeah. Really, like he was in the lead. I was nervous, and then I saw him wrecked. And then I just, I just put my phone down and went back to work. I didn't give a, I didn't give a crap who won the race after that. And of course, our two favorite Xfinity drivers had to get in a fight. <laughs> it's for the entertainment. Yeah. I was. Did you see the altercation after the race with Crafton and Nemechek's crew members? The truck race today. Yeah. No. It wasn't really an altercation, just arguing a bunch of loud words, but they put po- NASCAR posted it on their YouTube channel. I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, it's like I think it's like the hauler driver, hauler driver, which is kind of stupid. Which obviously, um, I mean, Nemechek obviously wasn't happy after that. And then the safety truck deal that was kind of messed up too. That guy should that guy should be in some trouble, man. That, I mean, it's like he, if you watch the video close enough, he like spun the tires, like right. But when he was right behind Nemechek's truck and this truck got sideways and just smacked the back of John Hunter's truck and it knocked it into the wall. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that was John Hunter. Decker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously Nemechek wasn't happy about that. I, I wasn't happy either, but that's just. Dave was already done. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what it might be like. Fi- maybe like a extra couple hundred in KB's pocket, but you know, great day for KBM, your favorite wrecked. And then my favorite wrecked and then Truex won. I don't know. And then there's always, a, there's always two, if you think about it this way, because some drivers are like, why is they're like, why is there a driver getting mad? You know, when they, okay. Say their day's already done. Right. Say, yeah. okay. Say if something like this happened running for 10, with like 30 to go and you know your shot of winning is over at that point right yeah and you have a wreck like that where like one you know people are going to be like oh they're fighting after the race why you know there's so many thoughts going through the driver's minds at the time too and then when you get hit like that you know you point you point fingers at the end because you know who you got hit by but then you got all these trucks sliding into you at 120 miles an hour in that you know, when you get hit like that, I'm sure it's kind of painful for them. Yeah. They climb out of the truck and they're just angry because they got hit like that. I mean, that's just, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of reminds me too of like, you know, when all those drivers got pissed off at Brad for coming through and knocking everybody around with, and there's a good handful of drivers with their seatbelts off already. Yeah. And that just pisses people off. You know, you're like yeah okay you're you're mad at somebody and you're eight i mean you're you're going for this guy and then you end up hitting three or four other guys in the process which is just dumb so i, I love when 
Tony mm-hmm. got hit, parked it, and then reversed into Brad. That was gold. Yeah, that was probably my that was my favorite part of the whole the whole night. Really, <laughs> he revved it up and hit him. That when Matt went running in between the haulers and tackled Brad, or almost. Yeah, I wish somebody would get their hands on Logano like that. <laughs> and there was, a hand, there was a handful of Kyle's crew members in the middle of that too. I wish I wish somebody would do do that to Logano, but no, Logano's crew guys have to step in the way. Yeah, usually how it goes. I got I to gotta listen to Tony's interview from Auto Club when he called Logano a bunch of words. Yeah. And NASCAR and NBC posted the uncensored version. I never thought I'd hear it, but I did. But how did we get to – oh, the ironic part of that altercation was it was Crafton's guys going to Nemechek's hauler. It's yeah, like, that's that's it. Should have been the opposite. Yeah, they're they're at the force hauler, and Craftsman's crew members are telling the hauler driver get in the truck or something like that. Like the fuck. Well, you know, also is that a lot of these guys. Also, what starts a lot of that stuff is guys. Guys will go back and listen to like other teams' videos and stuff. If you ever like. I mean, because Radioactive isn't out yet, but, like, you could still hear some – you could still hear some some audio. I'm sure – because you heard what Nemechek said on the radio after – and all that about Crafton's crew and all of that, or they're saying something about get your guys or some something like that. It's just – it's drivers just say whatever's at the top of their head when something like that happens, they're just going to say it because that's them. I'm excited to see um, what happens. Fuck, I lost my train of thought completely. Which I love how the last two times Kyle and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had words, Ricky Stenhouse is going to go down to Kyle's car while Kyle's strapped in the car. I know. What year was that? Oh, that that had to have been, I think it was like 18 or something at Kentucky after. uh, Yeah. After, After Rick, Kyle had that hard crash at Daytona when Stenhouse bumped him out of the way. Yeah, right, right. F- uh, following the 20 car wreck, Stenhouse caused. Yeah, he said, all he said on the radio, because Stevens, Stevens came on the radio and was like, just let me know if you're all right. And Kyle said, he's just a fucking dipshit. That's all. And then that was the radio. He, he goes, what a fucking waste of fucking space. <laughs> and ironically, that's the day I got unfriended by, uh, as I take, I take my words to social media too on stuff. And, but, yeah. um, long time, uh, the, the girl that, or the gal that used to work, uh, for work at KBM, the, uh, oh. yeah, the one that used to do, do the retail store and online stuff like that. Um, Obviously, she rooted for Kyle at the time, and uh, but outside of work and stuff, if you've ever noticed her, if you knew her like like I did, mm-hmm. um, and on her personal pages and stuff, she had her ties to Stenhouse because her oh. boyfriend or fiance or whatever he is now is Stenhouse's spotter. So, yeah, she, she kind of had her ties to Stenhouse too. And when I ran, when I was talking about that on Facebook, I literally noticed the day after that I got deleted by her, oh, which well. is fine. Yeah, uh, not no loss to me, but yeah, no hurt feelings. And then a week later, she announced that she's leaving KBM. So, yeah, <laughs> so. Oh well. And then literally the week after that was Kentucky, and during qualifying, Stenhouse thought it was a good idea to come up to Kyle's window net to say whatever he said Kyle had his helmet on because he actually advanced to the next it was when they still did group qualifying yeah I love what Kyle said in the press room I love what Kyle said in the press room that before that he goes did did Senhouse apologize he goes no he did not I'm surprised and he goes well he wrecked half the field you think he'd have a busy Monday but apparently he just doesn't care and they asked him are you worried about him and Kyle goes, I can't worry about people that far back in the field. Fuck. Yeah. So, these these uh, days, these days, Kyle's one of those guys. Yeah. 
So there's really not there's really not that kind of talk coming from Kyle nowadays, but yeah. But yeah, my fantasy team got absolutely KO'd. I had Bell, Larson, Bubba, Dylan, Kyle, and one other, and Briscoe. Briscoe got in a wreck, was up in the air for a little bit with Harvick. Larson and Bell crashed together. Bubba spun. Dylan went a lap down, and Kyle had his adventures. So that's the worst weekend of fantasy I've ever had since I started. I had Reddick in my garage, and then I took him out and put KB because I thought KB was going to be all right, and that was painful. So my highest finisher, I think, was – I have no clue. Kyle, maybe. But he dropped heavy in fantasy. I don't know. I, I'd I, assume you had that one. You had Bell and Larson in there, I would assume. Yeah, I had I had Larson winning the race. I had both of them. I had Bell, Briscoe, Dylan. Um, yeah, so when all those guys were out, it's like, who do I – put in my garage and I put Larson in my garage so I could save his uses. I had everyone else was like nine uses or above and Larson was at eight already. So I decided to put Larson in the garage. And what's wild about all that is, is if you noticed all the, all the dirt guys are the ones that crashed out super early. Yeah. I got to thank the 66 for at least giving us a chance to see someone dump a gun sucks it didn't happen but i don't know gained us a couple spots i think we were like 21st before the caution then finished 17th yeah at least at least we didn't run third all the all race and then blow a tire on the restart and finish 20th yeah that would have been more depressing actually i would have rather us had our issues or whatever early on like we did yeah instead of early but- on we just had them all day yeah. But on a positive side, F1 went well. Verstappen, yeah. Verstappen and Red Bull had the faster car, and Lewis started second. Interesting strategies. Kept Lewis in the lead at the end. Verstappen was tracking him down. And right at the end, with like five to go, it got down to like a second. And anyone else driving that Mercedes car would have – giving up the lead to Max. Only Lewis kept only Lewis could have kept that lead and pulled it off. Even even though Verstappen gave the place back, he went off the track to make the pass. It's one thing going off the track for lap time, but going off the track to make a pass, to complete a pass is something else. So yeah. You got all the Verstappen whiners there too. Um Lewis did what he needed to. Max really showed his maturity letting Lewis back by. A couple of years ago Max wouldn't have let him by. He would have just like I remember when he cut the corner in 2016, and Vettel was like, "He has to give. He has to give me the position. He never gave it up, and it bit, bit, and he got a penalty for it. So, good start to F1. Um, I just spent about 200 bucks on Mercedes gear. So that'll probably come before, or that'll probably come quicker than my FedEx stuff from Virginia because it's coming from England and it's coming from DHL and it says three to eight days. So. Oh, and you thought FedEx was bad. No, uh, DHL. DHL is horrible. Hopefully, yeah. I don't have to find that out. It, you know, it was that or UPS, and I had to pay like 15 yeah. bucks for UPS, so I wasn't going to do that. Yeah. F1's got until April 18th for the next race, so I got a couple weeks to spare for it to come. I got a couple. Yeah. I got the. The short sleeve shirt, the long sleeve for this year, 2021, and the team mask that they wear. I wish there was a Lewis version. It's got Mercedes on one side of the mask, and on his side it says Black Lives Matter. I, I thought that was cool. I wanted to get one, but they just had the team one, which is like got the Mercedes logo, and that's it. Hopefully it's easier to breathe. It's got like some interesting fa- ma- fabric make, and I've seen some other – I've seen some customers at work have like a McLaren F1 one, and – on Thursday, I saw someone at Safeway had a different Mercedes F1 mask, and 
I'm hoping they're easier to breathe with, but we'll see. What kind of mask do you wear around? Do you wear your rowdy one or do you have a different one? I wear my rowdy one. I've got some Adidas masks that are super comfortable. Yeah. We sold some Under Armour ones at work, but those sold out. Those look pretty comfortable. They slide down really easy, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's painful for me. I wear glasses, so anytime I wear a mask, they fog up. The rowdy mask is the only one that doesn't let, make my glasses fog. Yeah, that's the same. When I'm wearing my sunglasses, the same thing happens. But another week in the books of NASCAR. We're off Easter weekend. It'll be nice, a weekend where I don't have to get my hopes up. Um, I would be excited for the cup race, but, you know, I'm just kind of making best with the time that they're not racing now and kind of looking forward to the Xfinity race, seeing what Gregson could do. I think he finished – he might have finished second to Burton last year. I don't know, but he's got, he, he's got some vengeance he wants to prove – He's got the he's got the speed, he's got the cars, but just some luck, just luck's not on his side. I like what Kyle said. Uh, he goes, yeah. He goes when the car overheated and he had to pit. He goes, this sums up the last two years of my fucking luck. Yeah. So next week, we're, every, everything's off, no racing. Spend time with family, what we can with COVID. And then we go to Martinsville. Supercross goes to Atlanta Motor Speedway for three of the last five races. That'll be crucial. Um, April 10th, I think Formula E races again. Um, Arcus, not back yet. And then the week after that's IndyCar. So I'm looking forward to that too. And while Jimmy's got like three liveries we have to like vote on. And I like the dark blue one. I hope that one wins, but... In the meantime, we're going to be racing on iRacing. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll be on there. I'm still working on calibrating my wheel. Uh, I got iRacing set up, but I can't uh, – I can drive an Indy car pretty good. There's a lot of understeer because my wheel's not to the best of its ability yet. Like, I – didn't watch any videos or do anything to prepare to configure it. And the cup cars on mile and a half. So I just, I can't go into the corner without starting to spin out, which is frustrating. I run good at the short tracks in Bristol and stuff, but I got to work, look up some videos on how to do it better tonight. Cause I want to get it perfect. And once I get it to where the cars are drivable, then it'll be a lot more fun to get into the races. But yeah. in the meantime, he's going to, Gavin's got a desk to set up, his computer set up. Hopefully he'll be racing, practicing, testing in the next day or two. Um, I got to make sure trading paints is working because I spent a, spent some money on that to get the pro version race custom numbers. And I don't even know if it's working yet. So I got the cars like race this paint. I got, I got them listed as I'm racing them, but I haven't done a race yet because I'm not prepared. I'm not ready to... I can't control the car yet, so I'm not going to rush into anything, but it's all part of the experience. It's fun. Bristol Dirt's really fun on iRacing. Too bad. It was more fun to race on a video game than watch in real life. Yeah. I ran solid 18s for a bit, and then my cousin was watching. you think I'd be distracted, and I ran a 17.9, so I don't know where that came from, but... Thanks. Thank you all for watching another weekend. KB continues his runs of bad, good, bad, good, bad, good. So hopefully Martinsville's good, but wait and see. Thanks you all for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. I'm up another, I got like 30 left to hit a thousand, which is pretty special. Hopefully before Martinsville weekend, I can hit that, but it's a great, it's a great, Great to be able to share my feelings on the races with Gavin, us discuss the hot takes and that we often have the same perspective. So catch you all in a couple of weeks. Enjoy the Easter Sunday and goodbye.